From Words Aptly Spoken, American Documents, Part 2 of the U.S. Constitution. Article 1, Section 6, Clause 1. The senators and representatives shall receive a compensation for their services to be ascertained by law and paid out of the Treasury of the United States. They shall in all cases except treason, felony, and breach of the peace be privileged from arrest during their attendance at the session of their respective houses and in going to and returning from the same. And for any speech or debate in either house, they shall not be questioned in any other place. Clause 2. No senator or representative shall during the time for which he was elected be appointed to any civil office under the authority of the United States, which shall have been created, or the emollients whereof shall have been increased during such time. And no person holding any office under the United States shall be a member of either house during his continuance in office. Section 7, Clause 1. All bills for raising revenue shall originate in the House of Representatives, but the Senate may propose or concur with amendments as on other bills. Clause 2. Every bill which shall have passed the House of Representatives and the Senate shall, before it become a law, be presented to the President of the United States. If he approve, he shall sign it, but if not, he shall return it with his objections to the house in which it shall have originated. Who shall enter the objections at large on their journal and proceed to reconsider it? If, after such reconsideration, two-thirds of that house shall agree to pass the bill, it shall be sent together with the objections to the other house by which it shall likewise be reconsidered. And if approved by two-thirds of that house, it shall become a law. But in all such cases, the votes of both houses shall be determined by yeas and nays, and the name of the persons voting for and against the bill shall be entered on the journal of each house respectively. If any bill shall not be returned by the president within 10 days, Sundays accepted, after it shall have been presented to him, the same shall be a law in like manner as if he had signed it, unless the Congress by their adjournment prevent its return in which case it shall not be a law. Clause 3. Every order, resolution, or vote to which the concurrence of the Senate and House of Representatives may be necessary, except on the question of adjournment, shall be presented to the President of the United States, and before the same shall take effect, shall be approved by him, or, being disapproved by him, shall be repassed by two-thirds of the Senate and House of Representatives according to the rules and limitations prescribed in the case of a bill. Section 8, Clause 1. The Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes, duties, imposts, and excises, to pay the debts and provide for the common defense and general welfare of the United States. But all duties, imposts, and excises shall be uniform throughout the United States. Clause 2. To borrow money on the credit of the United States. Clause 3. To regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states and with the Indian tribes. Clause 4. To establish an uniform rule of naturalization and uniform laws on the subject of bankruptcies throughout the United States. Clause 5. To coin money regulate the value thereof and of foreign coin, and fix the standards of weights and measures. Clause 6, to provide for the punishment of counterfeiting the securities and current coin of the United States. Clause 7, to establish post offices and post roads. Clause 8, to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors the exclusive rights to their respective writings and discoveries. Clause 9, to constitute tribunals inferior to the Supreme Court. 
Clause 10, to define and punish piracies and felonies committed on the high seas and offenses against the laws of nations. Clause 11, to declare war, grant letters of mark and reprisal, and make rules concerning captures on land and water. Clause 12, to raise and support armies, but no appropriation of money to that use shall be for a longer term than two years. Clause 13, to provide and maintain a navy. Clause 14, to make rules for the government and regulation of the land and naval forces. Clause 15, to provide for calling forth the militia to execute the laws of the Union, suppress insurrections, and repel invasions. Clause 16, to provide for organizing, arming, and disciplining the militia, and for governing such parts of them as may be employed in the service of the United States, reserving to the states, respectively, the appointment of the officers and the authority of training the militia according to the discipline prescribed by Congress. Clause 17, to exercise exclusive legislation in all cases whatsoever over such district, not exceeding 10 miles square, as may by cessation of particular states and the acceptance of Congress, become the seat of government of the United States, and to exercise like authority over all places purchased by the consent of the legislature of the state in which the same shall be for the erection of forts, magazines, arsenals, dockyards, and other needful buildings. And Clause 18, to make all laws which shall be necessary and proper for carrying into execution the foregoing powers and other powers vested by this Constitution in the government of the United States or in any department or office thereof. Section 9, Clause 1, the mitigation or importation of such persons as any of the states now existing shall think proper to admit shall not be prohibited by the Congress prior to the year 1808, but a tax or duty may be imposed on such importation, not exceeding $10 for each person. Clause 2. The privilege of the writ of habeas corpus shall not be suspended unless, when in cases of rebellion or invasion, the public safety may require it. Clause 3. No bill of attainder or ex post facto law shall be passed. Clause 4. No capitation or other direct tax shall be laid, unless in proportion to the census or enumeration herein before directed to be taken. Clause 5. No tax or duty shall be laid on articles exported from any state. Clause 6. No preference shall be given by any regulation of commerce or revenue to the ports of one state over those of another, nor shall vessels bound to or from one state be obliged to enter, clear, or pay duties in another. Clause 7. No money shall be drawn from the Treasury but in consequence of appropriations made by law and a regular statement and account of the receipts and expenditures of all public money shall be published from time to time. Clause 8. No title of nobility shall be granted by the United States, and no person holding any office of profit or trust under them shall without the consent of Congress accept any present emollient office or title of any kind whatever from any king, prince, or foreign state. Section 10. Clause 1. No state shall enter into any treaty, alliance, or confederation, grant letters of mark and reprisal, coin money, emit bills of credit, make anything but gold and silver coin a tender and payment of debts, pass any bill of attainder, ex post facto law, or law impairing the obligation of contracts, or grant any title of nobility. Clause 2. No state shall, without the consent of Congress, lay any imposts or duties on imports or exports except what may be absolutely necessary for executing its inspection laws, and the net produce of all duties and imposts 
laid by any state on imports or exports shall be for the use of the Treasury of the United States, and all such laws shall be subject to the revision and control of the Congress. Clause 3. No state shall, without the consent of Congress, lay any duty of tonnage, keep troops or ships of war in time of peace, enter into any agreement or compact with another state or with a foreign power, or engage in war unless actually invaded, or in such imminent danger as will not admit of delay. And we'll pause here and we'll go on with Article 2 in the next video. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. I love you guys. As Tigger says, ta-ta for now.